I feel like I was the new school Grom, and then I like fucking sneezed, and then I was like washed up. <laughs> <laughs> you are listening to the bomb hole. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. The bomb. That bitch is crazy. All right, we're back in the booth. Stony Buds, how we doing today? Doing good, dog. Excited for this show. I'm excited, too. We got Willie McMillan, the mayor of Jackson. How we doing, Willie? I'm doing good. Well, besides my gnarly fucking fever I have and, like, I can't taste anything, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> Good good to hear. Good to hear. Um, you know, like always, we usually just throw it right back to where you grew up, right? You're you're uh, not originally from Jackson. No, I was actually born in Austin, Texas, uh, in a tent with no uh, hot water or electricity. You're My, actually, they your, your mom gave birth to you in a tent? A tent baby. Or you were raised He's in a tent, tent baby. No, a like, tent baby. my mom claims it was a cabin. But my brother just recently was like, dude, it was like a fucking, it was a tent. Like, like a yurty thing yeah. that we were like borrowing because my mom was going to have me. That's how big a fucking hippies we were. Damn. So like no electricity, no hot water. I came out with the umbilical cord wrapped on my neck, blue in the face. My dad tried to cut the umbilical cord, fucking almost cut my throat. My mom took the knife, cut the cord herself, and voila. Wow, blue in the face. Is that how you got the name Bluebird? No. That is that that is insane. The fact <laughs> that, that your crazy. your mom cut the umbilical cord herself. That's some cowboy shit. Was there right a, 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 a what's it called? <laughs> midwife? Uh, midwife? Fuck no, dude. It was my stoned out fucking dad and my mom and dude. my brother. What? And I was born on leap year. How old too. is your brother? It was ni- 1976, February 29th. So I just turned 11 and I won't have another birthday for 3 years. Because so. you have because your yeah. leap year you get you get a birthday every four years. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm that, fucking weird as shit, dude. So <laughs> we were talking before the show. It sounds like you had kind of a brutal upbringing. You want to kind of paint the picture? Yeah, of like as like? like as bad as it was, like it was still fucking epic too. You know, like we grew up in cars and school buses, and like my parents were just from that generation. They were like the real hippies. You know, like they're they're musicians, songwriters, and like. That was their whole thing, you know? And uh, so, you know, we were on welfare growing up for a certain point. My dad left when I was, like, not even one. Damn. And so, like, my mom had this boyfriend we lived with and, like, whatever. Uh, We had a swimming pool. You know, they were fighting all the time. She kicked him out of his house, and we stayed there. And then the welfare lady was like, we're not going to make you guys move. You can stay here. So we were on welfare, and we had, like, a fucking swimming pool. So, like... Sounds dope. It was always shitty, but rad. But rad you know? at the same time. Yeah, and then, so we got evicted because the owner sold the house at some point. I think I was nine years old. It was, like, 1986. And my mom used to spend time in Jackson when she was, like, 18. She was, like, the uh, chauffeur for the ski team. And uh, she drove them around in, like, a hearse car to all the resorts around wyoming or whatever and so she always had this like romantic thing love affair with jackson and always talked about going back and so when we got the eviction notice we were like she's like we're moving to jackson and we're like it it was like seven days later or something we moved you were in texas we're in san diego oh san diego okay in claremont which was a fucking shithole i mean the schools we had to go an hour and a half to schools like my school was kindergarten through 12th grade and it was like mixed everything. All in like, one school. Yeah. It was fucked. That sounds it was hectic. not cool. And and then my brother was a little older. He was like three years older and his schools were like super sketchy. He was getting like fucked with really hard. Like, but do you do you feel like when you're a kid that's all you know? So you're just like, Oh, this is normal? Yeah. You're like yeah. but it's not till later where you're like, That was fucked up. Yeah, but it was it was like <laughs> you know, it was like tons of Hispanics, blacks, few white people at the school and like So anyway, we go to Jackson, we like rent this fucking like rider truck, U-Haul truck or whatever. And my uncle buys my mom this like crappy Datsun car. We like hook it up to the back. We're parked on his hill in San Diego. And the next morning, like they didn't take the parking brake off. So we drove like 200 miles outside of San Diego and just set our car on fire. (laughs) Classic. And 
Our mom had no credit cards, no job. What'd she do for a living? Well, before that, she was working for my uncle. They, she was actually a coder in the 80s. So, like, we had, you know, we were on welfare. Well, then she started working for him. We were all, only on welfare for a short time. Like, I didn't, like, grow up on it. It was just, like, my mom was a fucking badass. Like, she wasn't some, like, deadbeat mom Yeah, or she anything. figured her shit out. Yeah, and she was going to night school and working for my uncle. But she was a coder in the 80s, so we had, like, all the – dopest fucking computers in our house when we were kids like commodore 64s like back when that was like a you know yeah i remember those. a badass computer <laughs> yeah. and she would like give us lines of code to like make the thing go across the screen you know mm -hmm. it'd take like five hours and we'd be like return and it would be like and we're like fuck yeah all stoked we're all stoked yeah um so anyway she was she was like a coder basically just self-taught through my uncle and stuff, and super smart. Everyone on her side of the family is, like, kind of, like, like uh, intelligent to a fault. Like, they kind of have it a little, you know. I think, like, really smart people kind of have a rough life because mm -hmm. they just know too much shit. Their brain, like, that makes sense. tortures too them because yeah. they're too smart. Yeah. You know what you're saying? Yeah. Like, you're definitely better off being fucking dumb. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, just let shit fly Don't overanalyze it. Just yeah. keep, it <laughs> keep it hollow-headed. For sure. Like... It would be cool to be dumb. <laughs> um, but anyway, like, uh, so we go to Jackson. We have no, my mom has no job lined up. We had like $400, 300 bucks, and she spent it on our car that lit on fire. So we rolled up to her friend's cabin, um, packed in. It was like me, my brother, my mom, our cat, her friend, her daughter in like a cabin this big, like 100 and maybe 120 square feet. And we went to like school for a couple years like that. And it fucking sucked. Cause like we never knew we were poor in San Diego. Like everyone was, Jackson. everyone was the same. And then we show up to Jackson and like everyone's fucking rich. We were like the poorest kids in school growing up. And like, we actually made like a vow. Like we wouldn't tell, we like, we're like, don't tell anybody where we live. Yeah. Like we'd get dropped off like blocks away. Like, it was, like, kind of humiliating, you know? And my mom was just, she just never gave a fuck about money, you know? She just, it was, it's never been important to her, you know? So she thought, she's like, oh, this hippie lifestyle is great. And him and I are, like, going to school, getting, like, made fun of or whatever, dude. I'm stoked on it now. Yeah. Well, Jackson's not, like, a wealthy town. It's, like, actually one of the, like, richest towns in North America. It's not just, yeah, like, yeah. a rich town. It's, like, a really so that division of wealth it's yeah. crazy like we knew we were poor right when we showed up yeah and then all the like the weirdest part was like the racism because like we came from san diego where like yeah, all our friends were it. black all our friends were mexican like our neighborhood yeah. was so mixed up yeah and we got we got to jackson and it was just like these redneck dads you know like the first time i heard like the n-word it like kind of fucking broke my heart you know, like, same with my brother, too. We were just like, what are we doing here? You know, and then the kids are throwing that shit around everywhere. And it was a hard adjustment, you know? Because I was, like, a skateboarder already, you know? at, at not, Like, I, I did skateboard when I was six years old, you know? It's that's like, awesome. Growing up in San Diego, is just like, that's, you had to ride a skateboard. So, you know? at what point did you, I'm guessing you started skating, and then at what point did you find snowboarding in Jackson? So, um... I, I got a skateboard at six, moved to Jackson, and then, like, all the sidewalks are, like, boardwalks. So, like, it's just, yeah. you know, you had to get some, like, 90A or 85A rat bones to, like, skate around there. You had to have some, like, soft, big-ass wheels or something. Monster truck wheels? No yeah. skate parks back then either, huh? No, not yet. Yeah. Not yet. We got a shitty ramp a little later. But, uh, yeah, I was like, what the fuck are we doing here? I was, like, pretty depressed when I first moved there. And, uh... I had this neighbor that lived across the alley from me, this kid, John Beckett. And uh, he took me up to the ski shop one day and showed me, like, a snowboard for the first time. And it was basically, like, some fucked race board. You know, it was like, I was looking at it, and I was like, I, there's potential, but, like, that thing just looks crazy. It was like if you put bindings on this thing. You know what, Brandon? On this table? I think it was a... <laughs> They had those ASIMs back in the day that looked like this table pretty much, a thin I, version. I kind of imagine it was a K2. K2. Because they, I feel like they were making boards so fucking long ago. Yeah. You know? No, I remember those. We're about the same age, so. Yeah, it was some kind of ASIM race board or something. Yeah, and I was like, K2 uh, had those. I was like, uh, it's not quite there, whatever. So anyway, 
some time passed and him and I went and rented some like uh, Burton 135s or whatever. And went, okay, so we're poor. We're living in Jackson. Fucking, you know, like you can't really complain about it. Yeah. And, but we had Snow King, which is like the, t- the town resort, which Place is fucking is gnarly. It's, it's steep. super steep. Yep. And so that thing was three blocks away from us. So like, that's kind of been my whole life. Like it's shitty, but it's so rad at the same time all the time. Yeah. You, you can know? straight up walk to the resort every day. So this kid loaned me his, um, so we went and rode and whatever. And the first day we went, all he wanted, one of us had to do a method. So I, I hit this cat track kind of did some fucking like, you know, slap bass slap method or something. And I slammed into a tree and broke my collarbone the first day. Yeah. Day one, right out of the gate. Day smoked. one. Yeah. Woo. Sled down to the bottom. My mom's like, I guess you're over this. And I was like, I'm doing this for the rest of my fucking life. Wow. And she was like, all right, let's do it. I was talking to chopper earlier and he was kind of saying you were like connected somehow to one of the, like the first snowboarders to ride Jackson, like the er- super early days. Right. I don't know if I'm off on that, but he was. Maybe what was he thinking of? Uh, Griber? John Griber? Or something? Honestly. Could. Oh. Uh, Who's he Chopper? Was, he threw well, Chad Otterstrom. Okay, oh, so okay. <laughs> there's this dude, Stephen Koch, and he he was the first dude to snowboard the Grand. Maybe that's and I, I actually, The Grand Tetons? Yeah, when I, was, when I was 13, fuck, when I was 13, I got my second job. My first job was at the carnival. I was a fucking carny. <laughs> and the second job was washing dishes at this restaurant right by my house. And the busser there was Stephen Koch. And he was the first dude to ever uh, ride the snowboard, the Grand. And he was like, and then he went and did like a bunch of like, it was one of those things like you ride a mountain on every continent or something. He was, he was That's like, he was kind of in there for a minute. You know, he was like one of the early day, like mountaineer type shredder dudes, you know, like. Like Jeremy Jones of the eighties yeah. or something. <laughs> That's before it exploded in popularity. Yeah, but also like back then people rode like one hard boot in the front and one soft boot. Yeah, in the, the back. Damian Sanders style. I like, might have done that for a season. A bold or two. strategy. Like I did dude, it for a season. I don't know if I'd recommend that, huh? Jackson was so fucking crusty in the beginning, dude. Like it was just a lot of dreadlocks and like fucking hard boots and shit. And then these kids from Utah actually moved down. This guy Rich Goodwin and Dave Smaley. They're Logan kids, and they came down. They're vert skaters, so they like were like, "This is how you look good in the air. This is how you grab properly. This is how, you know." And they they were the ones that were like, kind of kicked off the whole like spinning off of cliffs there. And that's sick. Yeah, like if it wasn't for those guys, like Travis would probably be in hard boots still. Wow. Yeah, or at least one just on the front. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Damien <laughs> made that shit look good. He had the penthouse. Oh, uh, yeah. Model wife. Oh, yeah. And he was out of control, and he was doing it, so everyone kind of was like, all right, man, you can tweak but, your grabs better, but turn good at the same time. But those dudes were like fucking rock stars. Yeah, dude. they were like rock stars. Like, we haven't seen rock stars like that in snowboarding. So, like, who's the, la- like who's the last rock star we've had in snowboarding? Like, Ro- Romaine or something? Yeah. Yeah. I feel Probably. like Danny Cass had a bit yeah, of yeah, it. Danny, he had a yeah. bit of it. Um, yeah. T. Ricky's got, maybe got a bit of it. No? He does. But he keeps it low key because he's got a lot on the line. Yeah. But I'll t- I'll tell you what. I'm sorry to take off subject, but I texted Travis Rice to get some information about you. He ghosted me. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I got I got a no reply. Well, I told you he's he's building some fucking yurt right now. Oh. And, and man, I didn't I didn't show up. I didn't show oh. up to work day. Oh, he's so on the he bad might, side. He might be over me. Oh, really? Willie's or, on his bad side. Or he's just busy. Or he's got your number blocked know. or something. I mean. You think he probably blocked it? I wouldn't yeah. see it. He's like, hey, who's this? I told him you were talking shit about him, so he blocked your number. <laughs> hey, would the resorts back then give you free passes as a youth in town, being that you were like... No. Oh, I mean, a lot of ski no. resort towns do that for their citizens, but I guess everyone there has money, so... No. They don't give a shit. Our, our passes to Snow King were like 300 bucks. That's it. And then these kids... Um, there's like this crew of kids at Snowboard, because I wanted to be on the ski team, but it was like too expensive. I was, you know, I was going to, like, race skis, which would have been so fucking lame. Yeah. But I met all these dirt bags. It was, like, Rob Kingwell and Dan Sick. Adams and all these kids. and and uh, Shouts you know, to Kingwell. He's a legend. Shouts mm-hmm. to Kinger, dude. I love that kid. I, talk, about, <laughs> talk about punk rock, dude. Like, Kinger's the most punk rock. He's more punk rock than anybody. Like, he does not give a fuck. 
Mm-hmm. That dude will dance in the middle of a party by himself, sober, in front of all the coolest shred bros ever, and he just doesn't give he a just fuck. Just doesn't care. Huh? That's punk, dude. But that's course, real punk. One hundred percent. I I agree. I agree. And there is something I feel like with that that Jackson Hole. Like, it's kind of like don't fucking talk about it, be about it. Kind of yeah. like don't fucking po- don't type your shit up. It's not yeah. like like just shut the. Shut up and just bust, right? Is it's that what you like say? That. It's kind of yeah. like got that vibe. Well, to it. and it was kind of like those early Utah dudes that came out. Like, if you like stomp something, you couldn't even show Stoke. You couldn't you show had motion. To, you had to just be like, really, whatever. This iron. Because if you were like, was it sick? They'd be like, shut the fuck up. You should grab longer. <laughs> like, you could have gone big. Let me take it out of my paycheck and just like paid him and the shit box showed up i got my first box i had to pay to get on solid solid basically. was dope though yeah and it was the shit and then i don't know time went by those guys would come out wastels and matt hale and kevin furlong and fucking tarquin would come out a bunch and like and then my buddy rich i was basically like i i'm not gonna ride for you guys unless you sponsor rich too because he's like way better than me and he was, like, kind of my older brother. Like, Rich kind of raised me along with these, like, other older kids there. Um, kind of just schooled me and slapped me around and, like, made sure I didn't act like a douche, you know. They kind of kept me in line. But they also, like, corrupted me really bad, too. So, anyway, Rich and I were, like, the, the package deal, you know. And uh, so we'd go out to Colorado and skate big fish and shit and, like, Rich was a sick skater. Like, you had to skate if you are on solid. Like, they didn't let anyone on the team that couldn't skate and couldn't hang in a session with those guys. And Kurt was insane at skating. The the sickest. He yeah. still is now. Still is, yeah. Yeah, like. Yeah, and his brother. You, and Dude, Jeff. Jeff and then, and then yeah, Jeff's. Jeff was insane. Dude, and then Jeff's kid, Jack, is insane now. I've heard that. Yeah, and Van, Kurt's youngest brother. I yeah. mean, that family. That family trips me out, dude. Just talented. They're like the most badass, fucking strongest family I've ever, I've ever known. Like, if you fuck with any of them, like yeah. you're getting beat by all of them. It's crazy. I, I actually did. I did Van's funeral because I'm like a reverend or whatever. I, I married Kurt and his first wife, and I married Gooch and his wife. Married a bunch of people, and then I did Van's funeral. Wow, I didn't know you were a reverend. Yeah, well, like online. Yeah, you like do that. Everybody's thing. like, everyone is now. But <laughs> back when I did it, it was like kind of fresh. <laughs> but yeah, I did Van's funeral. And it that was, must have been it heavy. It was fucking crazy, it's dude. Been fucking heavy. Like, I don't give a fuck about pro snowboarders, you know? Like, most of them are my homies. Like, I don't fan out on snowboarders, yeah. but like skaters. Like, I mean, this was the, the funeral. It was like the whole Wastel family in the front just crying their fucking eyes out. Yeah. And then it was like Hasoy. Gons, Frank Gerwer, like every fucking dude I could imagine showed up for that thing. Damn. And it was like, it was and surreal because I had to like run the thing. Yeah. And it was like, I'd never done a fucking funeral before. And for the listeners that don't understand, um, basically Kurt Wastel was and kind of still is just an absolute legendary pro snowboarder. And he had a younger brother, Van Wastel, who's a pro skateboarder for Gons is for crooked for crooked who yep. passed away. So just to kind of fill in people, if they don't yep. know who that is and yeah. And yeah. it was traumatic. I mean, he, he passed away in a skate trip. Yeah. In they're, in, they're in Germany for vans and, uh, yeah, it was heavy. It was heavy. And like Kurt called me up and was just like, dude, vans gone. And I was just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like we were just, where were we? We were in salt Lake for Kurt's wedding Yeah, and van and I, like our whole thing was, was chew like when we'd see each other we'd be like gotta chew nope let's go to sevy and we'd go <laughs> walk to sevy and get chew and that's how fucking twos was too yeah right <laughs> twos was like my chew buddy mm-hmm. it's funny you mentioned uh nick zeard and yeah the first time i got arrested and spent the night in jail was with j2 and he brought me out from colorado we stayed on nick's floor yep we were out late night ended up uh getting left at the bar and had to walk home a couple miles we finally get to the house, and Twos is like, ah, oh, we're here, let's run. And we ran in front of a cop car, and the dude got out and arrested us for stealing car stereos, which we never did. With Nick. And he bust the cop. We ran into Nick's house, but he kicked in Nick's door, pulled a gun on Nick's dog, was going to kill his dog. You're talking about a cop? Yeah. Jesus. 
and they arrested Tuz and I for stealing car stereos, which we never even did. We just ran in front of a cop car. Insane. And they threw us in jail overnight. Tarquin bailed us out of jail. And, I just saw uh, Tarquin. Oh, you oh, did? Finish your story. They though. never read us our rights or anything. They just put us in the clink let, and then let us go the next morning. But I think Tarquin ended up, Tuz never gave him the, the bail money back or oh, something, yeah. some wild story. But it was insane. Buds is that you get a target on your back since day one. Yeah, man. They, the cops are always looking for you. You're just yeah. kind of gangster, dude. <laughs> I think that one was on Tuz, though. I got mm. a question for you, dude. You, 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 you were raised pretty, you know, kind of without very many means, I guess. How did you develop into having a board company? And these things cost uh, money. You know what I mean? I guess it all started. And I well, guess I'm jumping around a bit. No, but. jump around. Well, jump. first of all, like, you know, my mom wouldn't, like, let us turn the heater on because it was exp- too expensive. Yeah. So my brother and I, like, got jobs and, like, paid the electric bill. You just learned how to hustle. My brother and I were both entrepreneurs super young. You know, like he bought a, a broken down lawnmower for five bucks at a garage sale and then like mowed lawn, got it running, mowed lawns, bought a truck, bought a new lawnmower. Like he had a lawnmower business when he was like 15. He was making like 10 times more money than my mom. Damn. And there's plenty of money in that town. So yeah, exactly. For that kind of shit, especially. Um, so I was the same way. It was just like when I, when I figured out that all I had to do was go work to like get whatever I wanted. Cause all these kids had mountain bikes and fucking you know, it's like I was surrounded by all these kids with who just had whatever. And like uh, some of my friends were like, yeah, I'm, well, actually what happened was I broke this window there. We we had this store in Wyoming. I don't know if there you guys know about this, but it's called Pomida and it's like a shitty ass Wyoming Kmart. Oh, wow. And so they had black snows there and shit. That was the first board I had was like me too. shout no, no edges. Uh, plastic bindings where you hook your feet under the you thing. You guys went black snow, did, huh? Did I had you the, have edges? No edges. It was a plastic. Yeah, it, it was like you, there's no yeah. high backs. You just hook your foot under the No, I thing. had I had bindings. Uh, oh, yeah, this thing had no high backs. But it had no edges. See, in okay. Vermont, I, I have it. It's in, in my Vermont, storage you didn't unit. fuck with black snow. You went straight to Burton. Well, because it's icy as fuck there, dude. Yeah, true. You would die on a black true. snow. True. He's from the east, though. We're talking like like golf that's course true. golf yeah, course yeah. straight into a, like a bump. You could Not wheelie, really like, nine miles on that thing. Yeah, true. Yeah, you could nose press, like, from here to, like, Japan. No problem. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt real quick. I get a question. So I noticed Bluebird's, like, most, mostly, you know, backcountry jumper. Um, and just be totally truthful because nobody's going to take it personally. But did you kind of – what's your thoughts on jibbing? Whack? It's not like there's a lot of jibbing in his area, too, right? I hit some handrails back in the day. Okay. I actually rode rail gardens one time. Damn. With, yes. With LeBlanc, Devin, uh, who else is there? Fucking Whitey and some fat dude that filmed for Mac Dog. What'd you did put I up? just call some dude I fat? I know who you're talking about. Ross. Yeah, Ross. What did you what did you put up? Oh, I couldn't do shit. I was on like a one sixty type A. It was like the biggest board they made. Uh, but that's the, a heavy crew. <laughs> uh, but anyway, to answer your question, like an hour ago, yeah, I was gonna say, what was the question? Yeah, I actually forgot <laughs> it was, that it question was, entirely. It was about starting companies with no yes. money. Yep. Uh, so, entrepreneur at a young age. We're, we're we used to film with this dude named Jason Moriarty. He's the guy that like started Slednecks and all that shit with like Adam Bebout and. Mm-hmm. Some of our other friends, um, Jason made a bunch of movies you guys probably hadn't, haven't seen, but they're worth checking out. We're trying to digitize them and throw them online, but they're like, you know, 90s, late 90s VHS movies. Like, no, no one really saw them, you know. Uh, but they're rad. Like, we were acting in them. They're just, he, he was sick. This what were kid, they called? Uh, Paparazzi, The Goods, and The Regulators. I think I've, I've seen these. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, I was driving up Teton Pass with him one day and was, I was like, I want to start a snowboard company. Like, I don't know what, but like, we should have a brand, you know? And, you know, Bluebird was just the term you used when it was like time to go film. It's like sunny powder day. Yeah. It's Bluebird. It's like, we're like, that's the name, like for sure, you know? And, uh, so he gave me like 300 bucks. And I went and made stickers. We put them all over town. We gave them to our homies. They put them on their boards, whatever. And then, uh, and then at some point, Lance Lance was kind of like making some money back then. He was like 
fuck, he must have been only like 17, 18 or something. And he was like getting K2 money and shit. So he like, he's like, threw in 300 bucks. And we, our buddy JP Martin had a garage a little bit bigger than this. And like he rented it out and we had these like quarter pipes in there. And we'd have like skate wax making parties. And everyone would just make wax and we'd skate. And so when you started making stickers, did you know it was going to be wax? No. No. The only reason I, it went that way was because I was in the boardroom, the snowboard shop, uh, and this guy, Jeff Heller, who lives, he's like, an, uh, like a Northwest dude now. Um, he's, I think he used to work for One Ball J, mm-hmm. and I was just talking to him about it. I was giving him stickers and stuff. He's like, you should make wax. And I got, he gave me like a really simple formula. And I went and bought the shit that day and went home and made it. And made it. (laughs) Yeah. And then I was like, it's wax. And then, uh, I don't know, Lance and I went up to Mount Hood and like handed it out. It was just in like tinfoil and we just gave it to people and we're like, this is Bluebird. And he was like, he was already on the circuit. Like, so he already knew everybody. So he like grabbed this guy and this guy. And we had like a gnarly team right off the bat just because he was like, he was like doing the thing. Yeah. He knew everybody. And um, actually, there's a little folklore that Peter Lyon was having trouble getting over this this tabletop at Hood, and Lance gave him the, rubbed it on his board, and then he made it. Sick. And at this yeah. point, Peter Lyon is a god. Yeah, the god yeah. of snowboarding at yeah. that point. Um, Do you think that fo- fo- folklore sold a lot of bars of wax or what? I think this is only the third time that that story has been told. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Buds, you realize I... We almost forgot something. Oh, name that video part. Yep. We usually do it earlier than this. Yep, we're getting we're getting a late start on this one, <coughs> which is okay. Are you familiar? This is actually um, okay. I'm gonna take the music away. <laughs> Presented by the Dew Tour. Are you familiar with name that video part? Am I familiar with Mountain Dew? Yeah. Um. (laughs) (laughs) How's how you feeling? How's your video? How how you feeling? Like you think you got it? You think it depends if it's like post nineties, because like I don't think I I haven't watched I don't really watch snowboard videos anymore. Let's get well. Let's just see what you got. Did you queue up some nineties shit? I queued up some shit. I thought he might know. All right, let's hear it. Doesn't mean I necessarily like the song. (laughs) <laughs> that's like some Travis movie. Yeah. Yes, it is. That was and they, a that's meatball, correct. dude. And they fucking blew, that song. That song sucks ass. Kill that song people sucks after ass. like <laughs> after like however many times. What's the band again? M eighty three. Well, you know what we got yet? We is got, that M eighty three? I don't know. M83. I might be making that up. You I just got a, the weekend. That. We got the you. Weekend. We got no, you a, the a pride pa- a prize about. pack. What we have for Willie is a igloo cooler filled with some bomb hole merch. You got a Bud Diesel shirt, some stickers. Dude, that's fucking tight. Congrat, congratulations. I mean, it's no w. fucking Yeti, but <laughs> it's pretty tight. It's pretty tight. <laughs> I'll use this. It's actually appropriately priced, unlike a Yeti. So, hey, um, well, I have a, I have a gift for you guys. Oh, oh, we're doing a gift swap. A gift swap. We got a little gift swap. So, here I know going. you don't drink, but these are. Some of the last bottles of this shit. Oh, damn. I've heard about it. And the last time I saw fucking Stony Buds was at the Las Vegas trade show, and you were asking me about about our wine. So, Dude, so damn, hyped. son. Where'd you find this? A nice small back, too. Wow. Yeah. Thank so you. So hyped. They, I'll give you send, a little. I'll send these down little, the table. Yes. There we go. Dude, so hyped. I love wine. We're going to keep it in yeah. frame. That's a very okay. rare. It's I've like got, an artifact. Dude, yeah, almost. I almost want to keep one and drink just, one. Just, just drink it, but keep the bottle. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Hey, uh, I got another gift for you guys. Okay. So, obviously, you dude, know. This is dope. You know mm-hmm. Rankin, Neil Rankin. Yes. Do you ever hear of a kid, uh, Sean O'Brien? Yes. From the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Rozzy kid. So, he uh, he plays mm-hmm. guitar in our band. And um, anyway. We designed this board. Like, me, I was talking to Rankin and Sean just about, like, why doesn't anybody make this board? Like, this is what I want to ride. Like, and we all kind of had the similar, whatever, like, idea, idea of a board for our style of burnt out, washed up fucking shredder board. Oh, yeah. a burnt board. <laughs> pow, pow board. 
Uh, so we we designed this board, and so this was uh, this graphic we used for the base. This was actually the it's like, all black updated Travis Rice. Uh, Can't see the base. Oh, I'm gonna take it out. Slap it a base. The uh, here I'll hold this. Thing so I don't know if yeah. anyone's familiar. You, where's that Travis? Oh, so this middle finger right here. Yeah, that's dope. That was Travis's graphic, and then this was like the updated graphic that Neil did for me um, a few, like a while back. Oh, damn. So Son. Flip it around. Yep. This isn't a Travis Rice board by any means, but I figured if I was doing a board with Neil, I would use the graphic that he that designed is for us. So, um, Here, I'll it's, get that thing propped up in the back. It is uh, all black on the top. Yeah, which is dope. No graphics, and then just this. Dude, that is sick. And it's Explain to the listeners what it is. So it's basically... In a nutshell, it's a 156 wide with a deep side cut and one extra inch on the t- on the nose. Damn. It's like we're, st- we're still making adjustments to it, but. Where's this pressed? China. Sick. It GP also has 87. a giant. For the listeners. That factory's dope. That's my favorite They're board dope factory. They're dope as fuck, dude. Yeah. I love the boards. They're fucking good price. You can sell them for good. And. Their boards are insane. Some of the best out there, people will get their shit made there, too. Yeah. It's legit. It ain't like China boards in the 90s. No. Like, it's very, very, some of the best boards, I think, mm-hmm. out there. And for the listeners, it's got a giant um, skeleton middle finger on the yeah. bottom. Sorry to take you off but, subject. But wait, I'm giving this to you guys. Nice. Wow. And I want you guys to, like, raffle it or give oh. it away or do something to, like, stoke Dude, somebody viewers out. viewers will whatever. be hyped. Yeah. We but can... give it to someone who rides a pal. Okay. That ain't a jib board. We'll have okay, to we're going to keep this thing on the set for a little bit, and then yeah. we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll figure out a way off. to wrap it, it off. Give it to somebody or do something cool with it. Thank you so much, Willie. Like, we appreciate that. Um, yeah. We are also, we're still in the middle yeah, of name that video, video part. part. So we got part two. Dude, this this kids one. Kids go on in the morning, and they don't watch the episode. They go right to yep. name that video part, and they have an answer up. Yeah, the, the episode goes live at 7 a.m. and like 7.05. 7.05. Somebody knows it. There's the answer to name that video part. So this wow. is um, song number two. If you know the answer, comment on the photo of Willie's face on Instagram. All right, we're coming at you with this one. It's a it's a classic. So if you know that, that was a quick one. You're gonna be hyped because that one that one molded my childhood. But I'm gonna do the uh, the outro music, and we really thank you guys for. Playing name that video part. Well, I want to talk about something that um, people often bring up as a memorable moment from yourself. And I remember watching it. Um, the natural selection announcing yeah. Travis Rice asked you to announce his backcountry contest, the natural selection. With Todd Richards, and um, you kind of got a little wild on the mic from whatever. When was this? What year? It's maybe six years ago, or something right. like that. Oh, the first one of those. Yeah, maybe maybe ten now. I don't know. I'm losing track of time. Time goes fast, dude. Um, We're all. Those guys like roped me into doing it. I di- I was in Vegas. Oh, you got roped at our booth, like doing the one thing I had to do every year, and they're like, Flutter Jackson, come do this thing with Todd," and I was like, "Dude." Everything that, like, Travis says you do, like, you can't turn down, but it's going to be so fucked the whole time, and then it's you're going to be you're gonna be stoked you did it in the end. What happened? Because I don't so, know the story. I was kind of just trying to, you know, juggle everything going on in my life, and, like, I flew home, and basically, Cersei and these guys told me that this whole thing was going to be, like, edited... And whatever, and I'm just thinking, like, I'll just come in hot, and you guys can, like, tone me down. And someone brought a bottle of Crown, like a big-ass bottle of whiskey up there. And Todd was like, you know, he has restraint, you know. He's kind of a professional when it comes to announcing. He's a pro. You know, like, he had a couple drinks. He got loose, but, like, I drank the rest of the bottle, basically. And, uh... The contest was just going to shit. They were trying to use all these, like, spider cams and shit that were malfunctioning, and people were leaving. What's a spider cam? It's, like, early day drone. So okay. it's, like, on a cable. Cable cam. Oh, cable cam, okay. And bless their hearts for having these big dreams, but 
Be fucking realistic, you know? <laughs> I'll talk to Richards, and he gave me some... I said, what are some memorable things that... Um, yeah, because I don't know anything. So, so basically, like, he, he, you know, you're listening to it. I remember at one point, Richards came back, and I remember at this point, I almost, like, spit my drink out, because he's like... Sorry about that, Willie. I was actually having explosive diarrhea. <laughs> and then, like, and then for you, Richards told me some famous quotes that, that there was um, something about fucking a dolphin's blowhole you said on the air, something about a girlfriend with three tits, and also the main punchline, which was go fuck yourself, Jackson Hole. Yeah. So the dolphin. And this was like on the air with a big network. No, this was more Ricky live. Style. It was more about the kids in the audience. Oh, okay. You know, which, like, don't bring them to a snowboard contest. <laughs> this is a, yeah. the kids in the audience. Oh, the you kids, know. people's yeah. parents. So were, it was like it was like putting earmuffs on their kids and shit. Yeah, and it was the corporate people that were running the contest that were yelling at me. They're not going to want to hear "Go fuck yourself, Jackson well, Hole" on a live. What happened? Or "Go announcer. fuck a dolphin blowhole." Blowhole. The, it wasn't a blowhole. I and you know what? When dolphin tra- are smart, dude. When tra- you know, I know, and they, you know what else, dude? Dolphin here. Well, let's talk. Dolphins rape each other, dude. They're, yeah, I've heard they're that. I've heard that too. Dude. They also they also get high. Yeah, they, they get pass high. the blow the uh, what is blowfish. It? No, it's not a blowfish. They have some sort it's of another, drug. Uh, they do uh, another fish that they like pass around like a doobie. Yeah, and then they just like lay on their backs and chill. Yeah, they're all high. But they're so. rapists, dude. They're, the dolphins they're are gang raping son of a bitches. They so might be smarter than humans, is yeah. what some research says. They're kind of, okay. they're kind of. They also fall they're in like love aliens. and get partners. Yeah. They also communicate like yeah. they have like a language, right? Yeah. They're insane. Yeah. Remember, there was that story about a human that fell in love with a dolphin. Did he fuck the blowhole? As this dude, kid? he had sex with this. Thing, really? And it was a big deal. <laughs> it was a big deal. Like people were not stoked because what's to say that the dolphin's down? But apparently the dolphin was down, and they the were like reciprocated are love. I don't know. I'll link the story, but it was insane. So to Check get the show notes, a real dolphin fucker. I think like five minutes ago you were telling me we need to start staying on track a little bit better. <laughs> this is, no, this track. is the shit I want to talk track. about. This is better so, talking about. I like talking about. So dolphin the actual blowhole. quote was: I think Travis was dropping in, and I said, uh, like you know, a little like not well known fact about Travis is that he wants. Got a dolphin pregnant just by eye fucking it. <laughs> I remember hearing this or reading that or something. But you know, like I think just recently, Anchorman came out. So there, he's like, "Go fuck yourself, San Diego." Oh, that was and, the reference. And so, oh, is that why I, I know that? I said something super fucked. I don't know what it was. This was like when shit was going downhill. And by the way, I had, I have a video camera of the entire fucking thing from our table. Oh, okay. I filmed all of it, Dope. and it's like hard to watch. Is it? Kind of. But it's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to watch. But anyway, I, I, I said some fuck shit. And then, hard to watch for you because you're yeah, like, Yeah, because oh, it's man. just, I'm like, But Damn, we might enjoy dude. watching it. <laughs> yeah, at my expense. <laughs> at your expense. Um, I'll probably link that in the show notes if you get me the footage. Yeah. Did Back the to Jackson, natural selection. Back to natural selection. Did the people freak out on you? Like, what's no, going like, on? No, like, I don't know, man. Don't give me a fucking microphone and a bunch of whiskey, dude. It's uh, like, I think you should know better than that. Todd said that he's... The announcer that we all dream of is what he texted me today. He also said something about that he is. No, you he are. Would you, say you, you know, no, you. <laughs> He's like, I'm actually no. Um, he said that that was like the announcer you dream of. But he also said something about you guys are you guys got quote unquote dick stitch chlamydia, which was a term I think describing the diarrhea you guys had. Uh, everybody got oh, sick. Oh yeah, yeah. Everybody so, had violent diarrhea. Oh, there was actually diarrhea. All the riders. Let's all just, the, Let's just say it, dude. Every trip you go on, some Euro brings the, the hiv <laughs> over and gets everyone sick. He's, I'm just bl- he's blaming it on the Euros. I love the Euros. Though. Okay. <laughs> blaming it on the yeah. Euros. When in doubt, blame it on the Euros. No, but you know some Euro got everybody sick. Yeah, that's probably about at right. Travis's thing. I don't know. I bet you they could pinpoint exactly who uh, Brought the patient Rhea. zero was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know who- You're not putting it down on food. You're putting it down on some dirty individual. Well, yeah, it's just some... Some <laughs> neck gator full of snot that you caught a whiff of, like hiking, hiking the booter. Okay, Let's just get- finish this. So I said something fucked, and Todd said, "Stay classy, Jackson Hole." And then it was just he teed me up to say, "Go fuck yourself, Jackson Hole." Oh. Like he just set it up on the tee and was just like the meatball, and then turned around and was like, "I didn't do anything." <laughs> that yeah. makes sense now. Yeah, so, so, so I said, go fuck yourself, Jackson Hole, and that was the end. But it wasn't like... But you only did it because of the movie. Yes. You weren't trying to tell them to go no, fuck themselves. No, not at all. 
Like, they gave me free passes before that happened. And, yeah. then, oh, and what then happened after? They stopped? Oh, yeah. They fucking hate me there. They banned you? Like, even, like, new marketing people that did, never even dealt with me. Your like, face know is, about like, me. Yeah. in marketing, there's, like, a thing, like, do not ever give yeah. this guy a pass. But whatever. Now there's some, like, cool people in marketing. So, patient zero, you had the coronavirus. I did. COVID. Yeah. Uh, and you said you kind of went over this when you introduced him. He said he couldn't. He had a fever and he couldn't taste. So you still you still have effects of it? No, I was just joking. Oh, you were okay. Yeah. I was like, Damn. Buds is keeping his distance. I'm I six feel, feet. I, I, feel, I am six feet. I can I throw a tape great. on it. I'm close. I'm, I, f- I feel great. Yeah, dude. I'm social distancing. Right this was now, in man. March. It was in March. Yeah. We got I mean, it up in. Uh, I mean, what do they really know though? You know what I mean? Yeah, we got it up in the up at the cat lodge, up in BC. I won't name the place because we're not name. I mean, we could. Gas, probably. Gonna, There's only so many of them. It's not bald. We don't need. I'll just names. say it's not bald face. Okay, okay not bald face. No. We'll just call it not bald face for the sake of That makes story. it even yeah. easier. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't. They they didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, it's not their fault. It was one of their. Dumb I mean, either way, it's clients, like. Yeah. But so what happened? So some, there was a patient zero situation. Some dick, like rich dick, fuck, came up sick and didn't want to like ruin the trip. So did he, he know up, he was sick? Yeah, he didn't know he had COVID, but he was sick. He had a. He was. He stayed in his room the whole time. And, like, he got 75 – he gave 75 people COVID. The whole – The whole lodge, lodge got it, yeah. Our whole crew got it. Dude, yeah, so how did you get in contact they, with was, Caroni? They so locked, I, but they locked you out of the country. I think it – Or something, right? Or tried no, to. no, no. So I, uh, I think I got it from getting a massage from Ooh. one of the therapists because she gave it to patient zero. The, the cesspool. She gave a massage to the dude, yeah. and then her hands went – We were also in the hot too. tub with the guy. Oh, you were in a hot tub too. with the dude. Yep. I had dengue fever, which like I I flatlined in the hospital. This was a different This was a this was in two thousand eight, somewhere around oh, then. Oh damn. So like I was comparing it to that the whole time, you know. So that was, was like, way worse. You flatlined, Jesus. Dude, I came back to Jackson from a wedding in Thailand and uh had the fucking worst shivers ever. I thought that I was like outside naked in the snow. Ended up going to the doctor. He sent me straight to the ER. They had no idea what I had. I got a catheter and a spinal tap that night. And then they life flighted me to in a heli. It was my first heli ride ever. And it was to the ICU in Idaho. Those are expensive. Yeah, they're 10 Gs. Yeah, plus well, 10 Gs. Um, and then they put me on morphine for eight days and like... Woke me up every hour on the hour to take my blood. So I never slept more than an hour at a time for eight days. All my organs were shutting down. I had 106 Damn. degree temperature and then I peaked at 108. And like I had full out of body experiences. Like I, I fucking died. And You're decided, like hallucinating. I, no, I died and decided to stay. NDE. Yeah. Like Near you. Near death experience. Just the doctors, man. It, yeah. It's straight up like I had a, a conscious choice. To either just... Because you don't think you're hallucinating. You think it was a straight no, up... no, dude. I came out of my body floating through the ceiling of the hospital, listening to my mom talking to the doctor, watching them, watching me laying down. Were you passed out, of the, out building. at the time? Yeah, I was out. Could you, like, say back to your mom the conversation to, like, prove that, yeah, you were listening, but yet you were passed out? You well, know what I mean? they were talking about if I had a will. Yeah. So that's what they're talking about. That's what about. I'm wondering. So I flew out of the hospital, starry night sky, went and flew all over, like, everywhere. Out of body. Dove into a circus tent. This is so fucked up. But this is like morphine, no sleep. I've been listening to this podcasts thing eating, about NDs. Eating my body. Yeah. You know, like, body shutting down, getting so close to death, you know. So circus tent. Dive into it, through the roof, grab the fucking trapeze thing like tuck me flip catch some chicks ankles the whole thing and then on the last one i just like flipped out of the tent and flew back and dove into my body and so when did you make the conscious choice to get back to your body like no one came to you and gave you the choice it's not like that it was like i had one in the helicopter ride where i like it's this everyone talks about it's the fucking orange light It's warm. You know, it's like... Inviting. It's like a perfect vagina. (laughs) Like, I can't wait to die, honestly. Yeah. Like, I love my life, and I will want as much of it as I possibly can. But something's there, right? But, like, it's like when you 
just can't wait to take that fucking nap. You know, like, I'm excited to die. I can't wait to pass. Let's see what's there. You- I love this. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But, like, I've been that close to it, and, like, it's nothing to be scared of. It's, like, the complete opposite. What did J2 say? You yeah, were there. I, I was there when J2 was... Let's was, okay, knock something off the wall, Tooze. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> happened twice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tooze was like one foot on the other side, and yeah. shit was going happening. towards the light. That was yeah. what he was yeah, saying, right? He was going through the light. Yeah. There was people the, guiding him, he was talking to people, and it's, it's all right. I think it's all right. Yeah, like I think if there's any way to explain death, it's all right. When I've heard like, a story just, recently, it was just like yours. They flew out of the hospital and they were able to see a section of the roof. And they were like, there's a, to prove it, they're like, there's a red balloon that is out of air on the roof. Because no one believed them when they said this. And then no they went and checked, way. and there was a red balloon. And the person would not have known that unless they had gone out through the building. I ain't got that kind of proof. Is this on yeah. YouTube? You're just going to. Yeah, it was something, it was a podcast I listened to like last week. Okay. So, you know, talking about skateboarding and stuff, when I was just in Jackson Hole, I met up with you at the skate park. Yeah. And we started talking. We had a great convo. And you were talking about how you recently did ayahuasca, which we've talked about Woo! a little bit on this show. Yeah. Um, but, like, you you want to describe that experience a little bit or what led you there and all that stuff? I guess I had, like, a bunch of friends that have done it, and, like, they kind of annoyed me with the whole thing. It's like that Burning Man shit. You Throwing know? it at you. Dude, you got to go to fucking Burning Man, dude. Like, yeah. their enthusiasm for it ruins it for you, kind of. You know what I mean? I guess I can't really name any names in this situation, but uh, one of my buddies that you all know, his brother had been going going and doing these like trips to Joshua Tree. And it was the first time that I had someone explain to me about ayahuasca, about like just kind of like seeing more results in their life seeing them, like, become better people. That's what I was, like, waiting to see, not just, like, oh, dude, you fucking talk. I don't want to hear about the trip. I want to hear, like, what it, how did it benefit you in the end, you know? And, like, I want to see proof of that, too. Anyway, homie was, like, I'm going to do this next week. Do you want to go? I can get you in. And I was, like, fuck yeah, I just dropped in. You quit everything. Cold turkey. No caffeine, alcohol, sugar, fucking... Avocado, like you can't eat anything. You basically clear your body out. Pre ayahuasca, you got to cleanse. Yeah, deity. It's like ancient deity. And so these people that run this are uh, actually, I don't know how much of this I can be talking about just to protect. Because, well, well, they, they you do, don't need to say uh, the what, well, names just talk about the, the result. Spot, more let's of the talk experience. About the, re- the result so, and the experience, experience and results. Um, so basically, and I've told this before on another thing, but. Uh, like, I kind of, like, started talking to this. Basically, like, when you do this, there's a woman. She's, like, a god. She's, like, the god or, I don't know, fucking whatever. And there's this woman. And, like, basically, before you even go do it, when you decide you're going to go do it, like, the work starts. Because you start, like, That's clean, the cleansing. You start cleaning your body out. You start talking to either yourself or, you know, you're kind of, like, it's the first time you're like clear and you're like, what the fuck, you know? Yeah. So you're talking to this lady, female energy. And uh, basically I told her like, you don't have to scare the shit out of me. Like I've already done a ton of drugs. Like I, I, you don't need to like give me a bad trip. Like just kind of take it easy on me. Like, cause I think like if you threw a dude like Donald Trump in there, he would be like crying and shitting his pants all night. Yeah. You know? And I'm already like, I've already had out of body experiences. Like I'm already like got a, a toe <laughs> on that side, you know? Um, so it was like mellow it came in and it basically it was just talking to her. Just like you would talk to your, you actually see her. No, no, you don't No. So no. you hear a woman's yeah. voice. And this is what's crazy, dude. I mean, dude. walk okay. us through it because we've so, never done okay, it. Okay, so picture this, dude. You're in this, like, big-ass teepee, right? And I'm thinking, like, okay, there's all these white girls running this shit. How is it given to you? I'll tell you. Drink it. Like, Sorry. Drink it. Uh, there's all these white girls, and I'm like, okay, so you guys are, like, shamans. And, like, later on, 
that thing got fucking blown open. That idea. Because, you know, like, Bluebird made that sticker, white people ruin everything. And it kind of came from, like, fucking yoga. Like, this, that. Like, you know. So, anyway. I kind of had this thing in my head and fucking... I was... I didn't want to overdo it. You know? Like, I was... I was I'll admit, dude, I was fucking scared because I knew I had demons to deal with. And I was like, this is going to be fucking rugged, you know? So I went mellow, and then, like, 30 minutes later or something, you hear everyone, like, puking and, like, crying and, like, losing their shit. And I'm like, fuck, I I clearly didn't take enough. (laughs) So they ring this bell, and you can go for seconds. So I went and got more. And the, the girl and the guy who were pouring it, they're like, we are trying to figure out the dosage, like how much I should take, like how much I just took, like how far, how deep I want to go, like whatever. And he's like, I'm just going to do this and whatever lands in the cup, that's what she wants you to do. And I was like, cool. Boom. Over the top. Wow. And I was just like. Bleh. And they sent you deep. They sent me pretty deep. And uh, I don't know. So this voice was basically just like, you're. Before we can do any work, we got to fix your heart. Your heart is like been broken and shattered too many times. Like not necessarily by like, you know, relationships or just, just, you know, just heartbreak Mm -hmm. that you get growing up. It just like fucking resides there, you know? And, uh, yeah, it was fucking crazy, dude. I cried for like three hours. You described it earlier as like 10 years of therapy or or something in in like like eight hours. Yeah. 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 And you do it two nights in a row. Oh, two nights in a row. Yeah. How much does this cost, this retreat? Uh, or any retreat, the experience? I think this one's like maybe 800 bucks. But they, you know, it's, it's fucking legit. But you straight up hear someone talking. Yeah. Yeah. And it's then, talking so, you so, then, so then it doesn't just do like, like therapy. It does physical healing too. So, like, at one point, I started shivering really bad, and I was, like, like thought I was cold, but then it, like, turned into this vibration, and I was, like, you know those, like, tuning forks, like, you know, tuning instruments, Sounds and it's, like, you. that vibration? Yeah. I just started, like, vibrating, and it was, like, going through my body, and it would just stop on, like, injuries and all this shit and just kind of, like, move through. And at one point, it was, like, so intense, I couldn't deal with it. And I asked her, I was like, can you just chill a little bit? And immediately the level, like it chilled out. Can you imagine if you could like take mushrooms and just be like, can you chill? "Ah, This is too much. Like kick me down like two notches. And then it just does it. It's called cocaine. That's what this shit did. Like on mushrooms dude, (laughs) or beer even. Yeah, that's true. true. It sobers you up. That's true. I've seen shows where they send heroin addicts. And to ayahuasca. To ayahuasca, yeah. and they come out not addicted. Yeah, I mean. They puke and shit their pants. For everyone everyone that goes hours. into that tent, like, I came out a better person. Like, I'm probably due for another visit soon. But Retune yourself? Yeah. This is the thing I was going to get back to is that at one point, you keep your eyes closed. And at one point, I opened my eyes, and everybody in there was a native. Like, and they were, like, seven feet tall, like, and everyone was like a spirit, like Native American, like spirit. Everybody in there. My hands and arms were f- super dark. Like I was just like, whoa. But we're they want all... you to keep your eyes closed. Yeah, you're supposed to. You don't want to open you your eyes in the spirit world, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like it was fucked up. I was like more comfortable with my eyes closed. I was like, this is when way you saw too that heavy like, out yeah. here, dude. And you can't move. I mean, you're like, you, all the rules are different. Like, gravity doesn't exist. Like, you can't use your body. You're just, like, like crawling on the floor. If you shit your pants, you're fucked. You have to, they have to, like, take you outside to, like, a porta potty and, like, they'll clean you up. They like, clean you. Yeah. That's part of the service. Yeah. And they're, everyone's cool Ooh. with that. Everyone's, like, we're here to heal. Like, everyone's going to go through some gnarly shit. And That's a... There's a there's a misconception between between hallucinogenics like mushrooms or acid, right? People think people put ayahuasca in this like recreational hallucinogenic when it's just a it's more of a they call it the god drug where it's like spiritual. I'm not. I'll tell you right now, yeah. ayahuasca is not fun. 
fun. It's not exactly there. It is. <laughs> like, yeah. Well said. Don't go to do it to have fun. Yeah. You're there to work. The second night, but, where you're like, kind of like, fuck. Well, I will say that, like, when you get through all that initial like teardown, you know, like all of that, when you come out of that, like, ayahuasca is one of the only thing that things that actually replenishes your dopamine. Oh, so it gives you this massive shot of stoke right when you come out of like the work and then you get this like period at the end of just fucking bliss. I was laughing so hard because I couldn't believe how beautiful and good I felt. You fear it. You I've fear never it. felt that good in my fucking life. Like it was, it was bliss. It was like true fucking bliss. And then everyone's done. And as soon as they, they end the ceremony. So like when they start, they clean the place with like sage and like it's full native old style traditions like amazon amazon shit you know per, peruvian and they and then there's music the whole time live music that they're playing and and it's like guiding you through all the shit and it's it's insane but they call in all these spirits at the beginning like the owl the the coyote the wolf like all this stuff and then at the end they call in the ayahuasca spirit and then everyone starts tripping balls crazy and as soon as they end the ceremony and they, like, say these words and, like, end the ceremony, everyone's standing up and going outside. All, it instantly goes away. So could they pull you out early if need be? They would have to end the ceremony. For everyone. If you did ayahuasca in your basement, I don't even know if it would work. Yeah. I think that you need this ceremony. Yeah, I don't ceremony. know if people do it's, that or how it works. Yeah, it's thing, fucking crazy. The thing I'm a little a trip, scared of it, the dude. Thing, the trip, too, is listening you to a, should be. a bunch of podcasts. I got it's demons. It's, I got they, demons, they all, I listened to one. It was like this This dude was saying fucking, he's like, basically, he's like, so you go to, like, talking about the ayahuasca tri trip. He's like, you see God? She's a woman. Like, yeah. totally like what you said. Yeah. And, um, and then another guy who's kind of doesn't, I was listening to a guy who doesn't party or drink or anything, and it is this weird thing if you're sober, right? Like, does this fall into this category? And he no. realized that he was the one who said, like, you're not hallucinating. It's almost, it's almost like you're the soberest you've ever been because you're looking at yourself. Like, you're seeing yourself yeah. as you are and not how you've morphed yourself well, to be. Kinda. Well, true, like, alcoholism and addiction comes from deeper shit. Yes, exactly. You need, you need to work Deeper on. trauma. You, you need to work on that. Yeah. And, like, if you just quit drinking... You don't fix anything. Yes. Like, you got to do other work. Um, like, when I, when I did it, I think I quit drinking for, like, nine months. And honestly, like, I fucking love being sober. Like, I, act, I really love not drinking. But I also... Love drinking. Love drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I also am, like, you know, I go through, f through waves where I'm just, like, I'm fucking over this shit. You know? And I'll just quit for like a big stretch and I'll experience that. And then I won't write any music or do anything. You know, I just get kind of boring and then, you know, start. Your friends again. stop calling you. That's what happens. Yeah. You quit drinking. Your friends stop calling you to hang <laughs> yeah. out. But I got mad respect for you, dude, because like, you know, we have a lot of friends that like, I mean, let's face it, dude, like snowboarders, skateboarders, like. It's a little different nowadays, but like from our generation, like yeah. it was everyone was from broken homes, you know. Like I wouldn't have fucking shit without it, and like snowboarding doesn't owe any of us shit, dude. Like True. we all owe our lives to snowboarding mm -hmm. and skateboarding, hundred percent punk rock and fucking. I know you guys probably aren't down with country music, but I like country, country. music. I've, too. I fuck with it every now and again. Like you yeah. pop it on. I started listening to it just to be like, dude, let me. It's good. The draw. It's you good know? for doing construction. Let me get you guys in on some good. Get us in on the good dude, shit. The way I am with music, man, is like, I'm not going to diss any genre. I like music. Just yeah. give me the best shit out of that genre. Don't give me like this dog shit, like yeah. fucking pop country garbage mm -hmm. that everyone hates and gives country a bad name. Like, give me someone sick. Yeah. You know? And like, there's good ass fucking, yeah, there's it's talented fucking people. good music, man. And it's storytelling. And that's what we are as we're storytellers. You yeah. Know? I'm down with all well, music. I'll tell you, music has different applications. Okay, like if I'm if I'm riding snowboarding and I have a headphone in, I'm gonna listen to like something that like rap. It's gonna get you stoked. It's gonna get me hyped, right? Yeah. It's gonna and then if I'm welding, sometimes I like to listen to techno. It makes me feel like a machine. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like some yeah. if I'm doing concrete, 
I'm going to listen to country music. Yeah, okay. So they all, I think they all have their purpose in what you're doing. Like you, you're not going to come out to my town in Wyoming, like not Jackson, but the new place I'm living at and like, listen to rap. It doesn't fit. Yeah. You know like, I, mean? I still probably would, but, but like, I, I hate current rap, dude. Like, I, I can't even believe like people listen to this shit. <laughs> you got to give it a it's, chance, just like well, we might get s- country. Will you chance, send you know? me some good new shit? He's, because, uh, he's gonna hate it though. Because like you, you got to give it a real chance, dude. I I uh, I give everything my open yeah. heart when I check it out, and if I fucking like it, I don't give a fuck what yeah. it ha- what label it has. Yeah, for real. Like if I'm down, the, if it's legit, then I'm down with it. If it's we'll like, find you some legit shit. Okay, well, I'll send you guys some country music. All right. Wow. You know what made me feel super fucking old? Uh, yesterday, I put I was looking for a song. It was 50 Cent. 50 Cent is now old school rap. He is. Uh, and I was thinking to myself, like, that felt like just yesterday that yeah. shit came up. But the kids nowadays don't even know who 50 Cent is. Which and is he, fucked up. And so, like, we're fucking dinosaurs, bro. Dude, time just flies, man. Like, I feel like... Yeah, I, 50 Cent is old school. That's crazy. I feel like I was the new school Grom. And then I, like fucking sneezed and then i was like washed up <laughs> it's feel that. How i feel that big time like, yeah, yeah all yeah. of a sudden i was like the old dude that they're like try to fucking ollie over this or whatever but you know what? i understand i think your mentality the way you were talking about romanticizing about skateboarding and how it doesn't owe you anything and i think that there's like you know the generation, the older generation, it was like snowboarding and skating is counterculture. It's not the popular kid in no. school. It's the outlook. It's like it's like looked down upon by society. And, and if you came up to to like in this society where they look down on skating, they look down on snowboarding, and then all of a sudden the Olympics comes and X Games and it becomes accepted, then I understand like yeah. you know like now there's kids that are probably the ca- the football captain that are. Also, snowboarders or yeah. skaters, and it's like it, that's that was never a thing, right? Well, I like, put it this way: so, like in high school, we had these like Nazi fucking commie like windows, you know, the little square, like yeah, six but, by six. But I could still shit. see that it was snowing outside. Yeah, and I would like Nazi I, commie windows. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about small windows, <laughs> just because and like small. up, so like prison like, windows. Yeah, or something. yeah, exactly. It was the most. They fucked, were trying to hold the, your soul back. Yeah, exactly. So I would raise my hand in high school, whatever class, and be like, I got to go to the bathroom. And I'd fucking hitchhike home, put on my gear, go to the resort, clip a ticket, and go ride. And then they'd call my- On a bathroom visit? They'd call my mom and be like, what? Your kid just left school, and she's like, oh, he was at a snowboard contest. (laughs) She was cool. She backed me, yeah. She didn't give a shit. No, because, you know, my teachers and principals and shit were like, your kid is not going to be a pro snowboarder. Like, there's no such thing. Mm. And she's like, I've met them because, like, Matt Hale and Jeff uh, Wastel and those guys came to my house. And she's like, I love them. They're the she's best. like, they exist. She's like, I want you to be like them. Like, you can be a pro snowboarder. That's fine, you know. Well, and, like, the principal actually told me that I was going to fucking work at McDonald's. Mm-hmm. And that motherfucker's dead. <laughs> well, fuck him. And I'm on the fucking Fire. bomb hole. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that guy. Whatever. We got to experience the 90s. And, like, I feel so bad. Like, that was the, for me, dude, like, I'm sorry I'm, if I'm the washed up fucking nostalgic dude. But everybody do, that was there knows that Vegas in the 90s was the shit. Dude, dude it was and great just shows. The, yeah. Just the yeah. industry and the ads. and I mean, think about it, dude. Like, every fucking company back then was ran by 20 year olds tech nine fucking solid fucking d a dc came later but like all those little brands the movement dan paterka like all that shit there was tons it of was them. all 20 year olds dude yeah the whole industry it was uh lord of the flies like it was all ran by 20 year olds we were just partying and we were partying and the money was kind of rolling because we were keeping it fucking tight yeah. it was like amongst like this small small pool to pick small from. pool dude and you couldn't get in like we wouldn't let people in ice t <laughs> tried to start a snowboard company he That's offered right. jamie lynn a million dollars to ride for him jamie was like fuck you dude like that is r- dope. i'm riding for live till i'm dead yeah <laughs> didn't know that like tarquin brought a fucking nine to the trade show and got caught with it like these were days when companies would like hire hookers to walk around naked at the trade show oh, like yeah. this is when i was in high school man like I went to every trade show from 93 until Vegas was over. And I didn't miss one Vegas show from 93 mm-hmm. till it was done. That's what I grew up in. Same here. <laughs> I could not 
go back to high school after that. Like the people I met and the fucking trips I'd gone on already. Yeah. I was like, high school was like fucking done. Like I was, my foot was out the door. I was already living my life, you know. Like I barely got out of there with a diploma. It's sick. You used to look forward to those trade shows. Then when it moved to Colorado, it was like, nah. It was insane never the though. Same. No, Denver, Denver ruined it. Dude. Yeah, like Vegas. Vegas was, was to look like, forward to. let's just be honest. It was cocaine and it was fucking doing deals at the bar at five in the morning with people. Mm-hmm. That's how you got. <laughs> on, that's how you got on business, the team. Uh, the good old days. Done, yeah. That's how you fucking wrote orders. You didn't write paper at the show. No, everyone you did it at the, at the bar, show. dude. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about this a little bit. Is so at one point in like year two thousand. Uh, I moved to, I, I was done snowboarding. Like I was fucking burnt. Moved to Prague and went and lived with Mike Perillo. Damn. And I was going to go to to FAMU film school there. And they had this like Czech program that was epic. And then they had the American program, which was whack as fuck. Like I had better gear at home. Oh, really? And so I was like, if I learn Czech, can I go to the Czech part and they're like yeah good luck like Czech is the hardest language in the world so I went and enrolled in Czech business acceleration language whatever dude and just took like mad Czech and like went out to the clubs with Mikey every night and just like you know like I got pretty decent I could probably speak at my peak I could probably speak like a 12 year old Czech kid you know or something (laughs) but anyway this guy Ray was trying to, like, license Bluebird. He started this. He's an old uh, pitcher for the Phillies. Turns out they've been trying to get into snowboarding, but they know nothing about it. And they were like, we want to license your brand. And, like, we'll show you how to run a company. And, like, we'll, you know, you'll, we'll make this into a real thing. That's sick. You know? And so I moved to Prague, and I was like, fuck it, whatever. I was over it. And then uh, he just kept peppering me the whole time. And then I was like, can I make a movie? Because that's all I wanted to do was make movies back then. And then he's like, yeah, but you got to pay for it or whatever. But like, yeah, you can make a movie. So I came back, we did the licensing deal. And then we, we made water to wine with Harrison Ford. Ah. If you guys haven't seen it, I think it's on Vimeo or YouTube, It's on YouTube. but it's Harrison Ford as this guy, Jethro, the bus driver. And Harrison flew his fucking jet in while he was filming for Hollywood homicide. (laughs) He flew his jet in. To come do the stupid ass. You just knew him from Jackson? His son's we knew the, his son. His son's uh, the star of the movie. Uh, yeah, like and, in the and intro. Shout, shout out to Chuck T. He's, he was friends with Harrison's son, Malcolm. And uh, Malcolm's in the movie acting with his dad. Great acting. And uh, yeah, we did it with 300 bucks, and it was like such a shit show. But it was like insane because I got to direct a movie that had like a story or whatever you know and harrison ford and harrison ford so he flew in and then he got like, han solo yeah, we're talking about han solo yeah man. and then he like drives we have this bluebird bus the fucking bald ass tire shit ass brakes and like he's dri- literally driving it he's like we don't do this shit in hollywood like we have stunt people driving these pieces of shit around <laughs> and he drove it all day and like we hung out with them and he, he was a fucking rad sport and like shout out to Harrison dude what a fucking Indiana shout out Jones. to badass, Harrison for badass motherfucker you know son, you see him around town ass. since uh every once in a while like yeah. he's homies with the homies yeah you know like he's rad man he actually like these hikers got stuck in the mountains and like search and rescue couldn't get to them for some reason so he flew his helicopter so Indiana Jones went yeah. out and can you can you fucking imagine you're like Thinking you're gonna die out in the woods and fucking <laughs> Han up. Solo pulls uh, up, literally rescued by Han Solo, <laughs> cuts yeah. the tauntaun in half with a lightsaber, and, and he's probably just you in it. He's probably just a super dick the whole time to you. Like he's <laughs> he's funny, man. Like like you, ch- we kind of. It's not that we were trying to impress him, but it's fucking Harrison Ford. You're trying dude. to impress him. It's yeah. the only, to, let's be real. It's, it's the Ford. only movie my dad ever took me to was Indiana Jones. Yeah, like, right. That dude's <laughs> voice has been in my head since I, can I was hear a it right child. Now. And there's a, we have this, we have this quote on film. That's pretty funny. We're in the bus with Harrison. And I was like, is this the shittiest movie you've ever been in? And he's like, by far. And his, son, and his son's like, what about, and he named some other movie off. Like, <laughs> he named a shittier one. A shittier one. But he did quote us in a German magazine that someone sent me, uh, that, they were like, what was your favorite movie to ever work on? And he said, Water to Wine. Really? <laughs> that is insane. Because it's the only movie him and his son are in together. That's sick. 
Yeah, and I thought it was going to, like, blow Bluebird up. I was like, this is going to be huge, and, like, no one cared. <laughs> no one fucking cared. It was a snowboard movie? Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. It, 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 but it, there's all, skit, there's all the skit, snow, skits. Got you. It's, t- it's, like, 20 minutes of dog shit script, and then it's, like, 10 minutes of riding at the end. <laughs> it's, like, his son lacing up his boots, and, like, Harrison's shooting shit getting ready to, like, drive yeah. him to the mountain and shit. Fine. You're rocking the, the famous Bluebird love over money shirt that you made your on your boards and you got the tattoo and Otterstrom wrote the boards. Do you want to like dive into that? You know who else has the tattoo? Who? It's Kevin Jones. KJ shouts. Sick. This was our contract when we started Bluebird Snowboards. You He's both like, we're not him. signing a contract. We're getting a tattoo right on our fucking arms. That's sick. And we lasted like a year. <laughs> <laughs> you had Chopper though. We Shadow. did. Yeah, it was uh, Wastel, KJ, and Otterstrom. And if some smart fucker in the industry would have given us some money and stepped in we could have killed it like that's a sick legend team you know Mm -hmm. like i was always waiting for for that you know just like somebody to be like we like what you're doing and this guy ray did it but you know he ended up teaching me blackjack (laughs) and that's like if you can't play blackjack with discipline you shouldn't be doing business that's a good like theory like i want to write a book on like blackjack and business because it, it works in the stock market. Like it works everywhere. If you can get good at blackjack and you want to talk about fucking cheddar biscuits. I do. I always like to talk about, we cheddar love biscuits. talking about the best. So when Ray, the first time Ray and I drove down to Vegas, this is the first time I was taking this dude. I mean, he wears jean shorts. Like who all, is, all who is this guy? Can you explain? He's the guy that came in and like licensed bluebird. Okay. He started you, okay. this company called cowboy up. Have you ever heard of this? No. It was multi-million dollar, like make fun of cow redneck t-shirt company okay he was a ball player and anyway i ended up coming back from Prague and licensing bluebird to him and he taught me business he taught me how to like inventory shit design catalogs he paid me as a graphic designer so i went they they schooled me in graphic design while paying me that's the whole time while we were building the sales up of bluebird to where i could just live off the sales and i quit the the art job but he taught me how to do all the graphic design so like i can go in and design something and like do all the color steps down to like burning the screens printing the shirts like i learned the whole fucking i mean it was school it was it was paid school yeah it's like your education i got paid to go to school he was like my business teacher and so the first time we were driving down to vegas from from uh wyoming this is the first time i'm taking this guy to meet my friends right like the snow taking this guy outsider into the snowboard yeah. industry. You know, he's like visor fucking, you know, he's like a dad. Yeah. Looks like a dad. And uh, so we go on the way to Vegas. He starts schooling me on blackjack, like the whole drive, 12 hours schools me sick. We pull in, we go to New York, New York, grab some homies like Nick Drago, bunch of our friends. Right. And we go, we each put 300 bucks down. I cashed out 12 G's the first time I ever Really played blackjack. Some bisque. That's schooling. some bisque. And I cashed out over fifty grand during that run at Vegas. That like trip. Those no, those years. Oh, the years. The years between like our first trade show with him in like two thousand till it ended in Vegas. Is that really fifty, or did you go in the hole? Because some people only yeah. talk about the wins; they don't talk about going in the hole. I'm up fifty. You're up fifty, up but did, were 50. you? How much were you down into the most? I don't go down that much. It's like two G's a trip. Maybe. And it was because of his schooling. Yeah. yeah. What's the secret? It's not a secret. It's more like discipline. Just like, just knowing when to take your money out, not rules. getting greedy. So you want to you wanna hear I the mean, whole thing? If you can give us a quick and give us Give us the cliff notes. Like breeze through it on a couple of pointers here. Basically, you play with a few people. Good. Say we're all playing, right? Yep. Say I'm hot and you lose, you sit out. If you lose a hand, you sit out. Till I lose a hand, you guys don't come back in. So you let the heat roll with the dude that's got that's the fire. Got the heat. And then when he ends, when that run ends, you all come out. You so you guys come pooling your money then? Yeah. Yeah. So, so not, you have a, your, thir- your chances of winning go up by, by two-thirds, basically. Well, well you just their, bet edge, on people's runs? their edge that they have on you is, first of all, getting too drunk. Yeah. And second of all, not putting chips in your pocket. So the whole time when you're winning hands, Slip you're the, taking like 80% chippy. and it's going in your pocket. And you, the first goal that you have is to 
put your initial investment in, win a couple hands, and take your investment out and then play with their money. And then you can be reckless. Once your money's off the table, yeah. Yep. And then you start scooping their money into your pocket. And then when you run out of chips on the table, you fucking leave. So and the then discipline everyone is pulls not- their their chips together and you cash out and you're fucking. So that's done. a lot easier said than done because when you're hot, you never think you're going to get unhot. And you oh, bet big, win big. You don't win every time. You don't win every time. You don't win every time. But we got on this like eight year streak <laughs> where our energy, you know, like when your confidence yeah. is fucking <sighs> permeating, you know, and like the more we won at Blackjack, the more wax we sold. Like you're just on. It one. was just on. We I were was just doing the same thing, on but on one. the craps table, and it's yeah. all confidence, man. You See, can but almost I, control I, those dice. I don't fuck with craps because it's just there's too much going on. There's a lot going on, but you start to figure it out, and you get your yeah. confidence up. You talk shit. You can almost just you get on I, those heaters. I like the simplicity of blackjack. And the other thing I will say about blackjack is that you guys ever hear that like that physics theory that's like if you have a cat in a box and you shoot the box with a gun that cat is not dead yeah, or alive until called? you open it right what's it called there's a name for this theory i don't know i'm not that smart yeah so it's got a name what i believe is that these d- this deck of cards whether it's a three deck or a bottomless one to the basement one of those <laughs> like whichever one it is that card hasn't been revealed to this world until it's flipped over. So there's an opportunity to mentally manifest the card that you want. Schrodinger's I, cat and is a thought experiment. Yeah, so blackjack is all energy. If you're feeling down, don't go gamble. Like you have to be on the fucking high from something to go gamble. And anyway, you manifest these cards and you manifest you don't think about the cards you don't want. You only think about the cards you want. And you, want, you think about the cards you want them to have that'll make them bust. And if I'm playing with Ray and we both won it, that four. You're manifesting And it, all our homies behind us want that four. And we're tipping the fuck out of the dealer on every win. He even wants us to get that four. Mm-hmm. We are putting energy into a four coming out. And that four flips and you just won. A fucking crazy stack. You're of manifesting it off. I want to go gamble yeah, with you, bro. Hyped, you're getting me dude. excited. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go hit the tables, man. So pull out some cheddar B. Hit up I, Matt Damon. Wasn't oh. he in that blackjack movie? <laughs> we'll get him in the mix. And a lot we'll of do shout this, out to man. Matt. A lot of my me? friends have witnessed this shit, like full on. I, I was driving through Vegas with Wastel one time, and I was like, "Yo, pull over at Bellagio. I'm gonna go get us some gas money." And, like, rolled in and won, like, $2,500 on $100. A little more than gas money. See, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. And he was just like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> I was like, I can't, I can't do those ollies. It's the old Schrodinger's cat theory. Guys, no, the guys, Schrodinger's <laughs> cat theory. You don't know if the cat's dead or alive. You know you what I mean? Know, uh, Until time. you reveal what's in the box. I'm going to fucking throw you a curveball right now. Do it. We're going no, off. Curveball. We're, talking, we're talking about punk rock earlier, mm-hmm. right? And I had this weird epiphany that I, I maybe I'm wrong, but hear me out on this. You know, skating used to be punk. I mean, it still is. Snowboarding, it used to be punk, but let's be real. It's in the fucking Olympics. People, like, it's not that punk anymore. Snowboarders are pussies. Yes, well said, well said. You know who's kind of punk right now? Who? Rollerbladers. There is dude, no, my there, chick dude, rollerblades. Dude, there is no dude, bladers ch- at the park, man. My chick rollerblades. Dude, respect. And she was all embarrassed. She was, like, sneaking out with the blades. <laughs> and, like... <laughs> I think it's sick because, like, if it was, like, 94, I'd be like, bitch, get the fuck yeah. out of my house. Yeah. But, like, now I'm like, dude, rollerblading is punk. Dude, when I see so- a bladers at the park, I'm like, respect. There's not a lot of you left. There's dude, what dying if, What if I rolled up to the Vans Park here on a, sc- on a Razor scooter? See, that's that's accepted too much. I think yeah. blades are more punk. If I came out in with blades? Blades, you'd be like, fucking respect. But, I don't know, Lizard was on here talking about taking a Razor scooter to the shin, and he's got a new found respect oh, for yeah. it. Talking about shins, dude. Everyone's into these fucking foil boards now. Fuck those things, dude. How is that? Travis related to and Rasmus shins? and all these dudes are. <laughs> what are the foil boards? So it's Double a decker. surfboard with a fucking oh, yeah, yeah. shinner machine. <laughs> oh. Basically, that they bolt to it. Oh. And you basically like surf five feet off the water. And like why do they want to surf five feet off the water? You don't need a big wave. You don't need a big you wave. You can pump the or uh, a rope. You can just kind of like I mean, and I see it's but purpose. you're in the ocean? 
Uh, some, I mean, Laird Hamilton is like. I see Chris Rasman out I, there. I doing see it. reasons for it. You can but do like, it in Lake or no? Yeah, yeah. but yeah. like on yeah. a boat, like don't bring that thing on the boat, dude. Yeah. It's like it's like if I showed up to a house party with like a huge painter's ladder, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like you can't put that thing anywhere. No one has anywhere to sit anymore. And then and then like Travis takes this thing out one day and he's like, "You got to try it, dude." I'm like, "Fuck." <laughs> Fuck this thing. It was dude. your boat? No, it was... Uh, uh, but it just ruins <laughs> everyone's Cam time on the boat. boat. Unless you got yeah. a goddamn pontoon boat, you're <laughs> fucked on that So, thing. like, everyone's cramped. There's nowhere to, like, <laughs> sit. And this fucking shinner, this blade is just right by your face the whole time, you know? And then... And it's Travis, so you're like, and, fuck. And then man, you get right. in. You get in. It's, like, the sickest thing anyone's gonna do is they're gonna, like, get up on it and, like, go. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the gnarliest thing that's gonna go down, and you're like boring. There's like, no tricks. Get the skate, the wake skate out, yeah. dude. That's the shit because it's so slippery, and if you pull any trick on the wake skate, it's fucking hard. Like, we, like that's the I, shit. Wait, it it's, feels like surfing. It is super fun. I absolutely love doing it. One of my biggest pet peeves though is you got the buddy that goes wake surfing, and then you look at their their story, and it's like. 30 bars of like Jimmy fucking pumping the wave yeah, and then dude. Jimmy's girlfriend. I'm talking about the wave. wake skating. Oh, wake skating. Like I'm not talking wake surfing. Okay. You're like I'm talking like with shit. the rope, but you're like Ollie in the wake with no bindings and it's slippery as fuck. Are you talking about like, oh yeah, doing kickflips It's kick like the little shit. boards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like Cam Fitz rips at it. Yeah. Like he does a bunch of shit. Like it's, it's fun as fuck, dude. Like there's, you get a session going, you know, like. It's hard as fuck. The foil board, I went out one day with Travis. He had this fucking thing. I hated it right off the bat, dude. And, like, he made me do it, fucking blew out both ACLs, <laughs> cut my mis- <laughs> meniscus in half, fucking got the worst shinner I've ever had in my life. And I was like, it wasn't even worth it, dude. Like, it was like, like the juice isn't worth the squeeze. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's kind of mm-hmm. like fucking hitting a handrail on one rollerblade. Like, you're going to get fucking smoked. <laughs> you're going to get so fucked up. But if you pull it, like, is it that rad? Yeah, like, does it's not it look even worth that, it. Does it look that cool? I don't know. I'd like to see someone blade a rail with one blade. Is there one-footers <laughs> in the blade industry? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know enough about dude, it. One sock on one foot? That's a new <laughs> thing, dude. It'd be sick, like, one blade and then a flip-flop on the other side. <laughs> just sketchy. And they're just like, what's that shit called? The guys who bounce around the city, like, flip off a deck. Oh, parkour. Oh, parkour. Parkour. It's like parkour, dude. but one rollerblade and one flip-flop. You do a mixture of both. It'd be insane, That dude. would be sick. Because then you could just go to the beach later. <laughs> just one hoof it, just walk it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so fuck the... Uh, Hydrofoil. Fuck those things. And actually, it's pretty funny because... Cam will be like, want to go out on the boat? I'm like, is Travis coming? He's like, yep. I'm like, is the foil coming? He's like, yep. I'm like, I'm good. (laughs) Fuck the foil, dude. One more thing I want to bitch about. (laughs) What we were talking about with uh, letting the public into snowboarding, right? The general public. like, So I think that's when we lost snowboarding, right? And that's like where the snowboarding is better when you hated us came up. Great slogan. Which was... uh, was quoted by Travis on Conan O'Brien. Ah. I don't know if you knew that. Didn't know. That's a fun little fact. But though. it's it's uh, you can find it on my Instagram somewhere down there. Uh, anyway, that's where that came from, and it's like, so this is what happened. When we started Bluebird, we were making snowboard products for snowboarders that were just like us. It was like so easy. It was like I know what they want because I'm one of them, right? Then maybe the Olympics happened or. I don't know, 20 year olds running every company at the trade show and the adults showing up, the ski industry, and being like, oh, we'll take it from here. Yeah. You know, which luckily they showed us how to build fucking good boards, at least. Yeah. Like that's what skiing did do. They had been making skis for so long that once they took over our industry, boards got pretty fucking good, right? Salmon boards are great. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, anyway, we, what started to happen is the, the, general public started coming into the shops, right? It's not Johnny McFucking Shrednar because that dude's broke as fuck and doesn't buy shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He gets hooked up from, like, trading pizzas to his buddy f- and some weed for a board or whatever. Yeah, I don't so, know. So general public... Back in the 90s. Let's yeah. talk 90s, whatever. Late yeah. 90s. Mid-2000. I don't know when it really happened. When was, when was the first Olympics? 2000-something. Okay, let's, play, let's blame it on the Olympics. Maybe 2004? 
I don't know. Let's blame it on the Olympics. Okay. We're blaming it on the Olympics. So, um, so the general so, public, so the general starts, public starts coming into the shop, right? And they're like, hmm, these bindings are stiff and this, board, you know, whatever. Like, all of a sudden, the companies, the reps, the, the shops would relay to the reps and the reps would relay to the companies that this is what fucking Uncle Rick wants. You know what I mean? So our whole industry, all the products started being geared towards Uncle Rick. Okay, first of all, I don't like the name Uncle Rick yeah, because little... Ricky is kind of my nickname. Uh, so we un... call him Uncle Jim. Maybe the only reason I call him nineteen ninety eight. The only time, the Olympics only reason I call him Uncle Rick is because Jamie Lynn has like these Uncle Rick stories. Okay, <laughs> and I just feel like if I can think of like someone's uncle comes into a shop and is like he comes in and is like all that purpose dad shoes yep. and like jean shorts and he's like nah. like that's uncle rick yeah, yeah it's uncle rick he okay, buys shit at uncle rei rick. he right. gets shit at rei one day you might be uncle ricky yeah and and what happened was like eventually we started really depending on this money right because more people started snowboarding mm-hmm. we needed to pay for more cocaine habits of pro snowboarders yep that's that i can in. i can actually attribute to that so like the money had to flow so we needed uncle just call him Uncle Rick. Eric. Uncle yeah. Eric. Can we call him Uncle Air Rick? Yes. Because he's like Air Rick, right? <laughs> That's a sick t-shirt. Okay. Uncle Air Rick. Uh, so Uncle Air Rick, he rolls in and he's like... Jean shorts. He starts putting his money in the snowboard industry and like all the products start leaning that way. Boots start getting softer. Boards start getting fucking noodly or, you know, we had fucking reverse camber. What the fuck? I never I broke my ribs that. right on those pieces of shit. I hit a tree on one of those because, like, it doesn't. There's just nothing there it's for It's not you. a snowboard, dude. Yeah. It's like, if I had some friend from, like, I don't know, fucking South Korea that didn't snowboard that came to the States and was like, I want to go snowboarding tomorrow, I would give him a fucking yeah, reverse camera board. They're much easier yeah. to learn. But, like, them. don't try to, like, ri- actually ride the mountain with one of those Aggressively. pieces of shit. By the yeah. way, this is fucking straight up OG camber. OG cameras, what's yeah. up? He's pointing at the board sitting next to him for the little I'm kind of down with the early rise, though, too, on the nose. And, like, maybe a little on the tail. Like, I hate all these quivers, man. Like, you know, like, I'll, I'll go on a trip or something be like, I don't even know. It, have you ever given your dog, like, seven toys at the same time? <laughs> it's like, he doesn't know what the fuck to play yeah, with. He's like, hey, out. he, like, eats this, and he chases that, and then he's, he's you fucking ruined him. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we did with these fucking quivers, man. And it's like, I don't know if I should bring the fucking... The orca or the this or like the board I designed or like I don't know like I just want to bring one board. Well, like I, remember back in the day you just get one you free got one shitty board. board. Yeah. You just had to deal with and it and you dealt with it. I'll you tell know? you this though. I think that that the the thing I notice is like a stiff. The only thing I notice is stiff and soft. And yeah. the, the the my riding I've. I like a stiffer board now. I go faster. You can land. You can clear the jump. Yeah. And it's like, it's, you can go big. You can go fucking big on a stiff board. But like yeah. a soft ass board is fun at low speeds and butters and that. Yeah. But that, that's not what I really <laughs> want to do made, anymore. We made this like KJ reverse camera board. And like I wrote it in the spring one time in Jackson. It was so fucking fun, dude. I was like, I can do all these fucking flat ground tricks. Like this shit is fun as hell. You know what I mean? Like. It was a good time yeah. in that one tiny little fucking window yeah. of snowboarding. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? You don't take that thing up like anything that's, you know. You know what's great about right now is that, like, you know, you're sponsored by these companies. They send you, like, some sh- Remember all the shitty stuff you used to wear because it was free? Yeah. Yes. And it didn't work? Yep. It was such a nightmare. I can just go and buy whatever the fuck I want now. You don't need So I'm like, what anyone? companies are dope? I go and buy fucking Howl gloves. I go buy... Dang shades. Oh, yeah. Beresford said he saw you order something. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, like, support dudes that I think are fucking rad. I buy shit from Holden. And, like, Mikey will throw me a little discount every once in a while. But, like, I bought 32 outerwear this year. So sick. And That's dope. They sent me the wrong fucking size, dude. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, yeah. Did I they got, correct that? I got the Nicholas shit. Let's talk about that. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah, let's get into it. I get it. I get business, dude. Trust me. Like, I get why they let go of Nico. But I also thought it was kind of like a bitch ass move <laughs> from the brand standpoint. Yeah. Okay. Like I Elaborate. get it. I think that snowboarders are really maybe skaters too, but maybe people in general are just really quick to throw people onto the fucking bus, man. We've been talking for a yeah, minute. Man. I hours, think that was a boys. fucking banger, man. I think we, I think we covered a lot of great topics, a lot of a good deep topics. topics, nostalgic Conspiracy topics. Theories. There's so much shit. I wanted to get into. Ayahuasca. But 
We just don't have enough time. Hey, you only got, I mean, you, you can only say what you can say, and we, we'll have you back on here. Yeah, that's I got the way whole, too that's many the stories. I haven't even gotten into my stories yet. The Harrison Ford one was, was insane. pretty fucking good. Oh, one insane. more thing from Harrison Ford. He shows up. So that morning, like, I had to get all the cameras set up, and then I was like, I couldn't even get everything set up because I was fucking with the coffee maker. Like, the coffee maker, like, blew coffee all over the kitchen, so I was cleaning it up and all this shit. And he comes over, he's like, got any coffee? And I was like, yeah. And I poured him some coffee. And he's like, he, we have this on film, I'm pretty sure. But he like takes a sip and he like spits it out on my floor in my <laughs> kitchen. And he goes, this shit is cold. I can't be living like this. In your kitchen yeah. of your house. <laughs> yeah, it was sick. It was so sick. You know who kind of has the best footage is Kinger. Because like, he's like, can I just come and shoot like behind, behind the scenes shit? Yeah. And I was like, fuck yeah. So he, he gave me all these tapes of just like. Some super fucking whatever. Anyway. You got to go through that shit. Yeah, one of these days. <laughs> All right. Woo. Well, I think we did it. We really appreciate having you on the show, Willie. We yeah, thanks for driving down from Jackson, man. That's My dope. Honor. Yeah, we thanks appreciate Thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me rant. Give this thing away or make some money on it. I want to see you guys keep going, and like this is good for snowboarding. Appreciate I, that. I want to see more podcasts and – we're, I'm oh, actually yeah, so yeah. We, oh, yeah. we actually brought Willie on to talk about the fact that he's launching a podcast as That's well. Yeah, oh, we almost uh, forgot that major key point. So uh, it's called the Hamburg Meat Grinder Podcast, and it's me and uh, Andrew Hardingham. Great name, nice. And I don't know. Well, just you and Hardingham. Yeah, man, the two of you can talk. So so I don't and know. And the two of you have some really good stories. We're so. gonna we're gonna fuck around with it. And see if it sticks. If people are into it, then we'll keep going. You got two subscribers sitting yeah, over here I already. Mean, I can listen okay. to both of you guys talk shit for hours, so <laughs> okay. I'm down. Cool. Dude, Hardingham's insane. Yeah, I love that dude. He's a great dude. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good mix with the two of us. The The podcast I really want to see is Todd Richards and Mike Rankwit. Oh, yeah. Podcast. I know it's, like, geographically not possible. Yeah. But like. <laughs> Those two guys just fucking ruining people would be like the best podcast <laughs> ever. <laughs> Richards is king of banter. I, I got a question for you. So we there's a running situation going with Chad O between and um, Richards of who's going to be the oldest to do the McTwist, and they're both who you know snowboarding who do you, who, or skating? No snowboarding. So I do, I feel like Chad O's going to be able to McTwist till he's like ninety. Oh, it's you like who can McTwist the longest yes, in life? Yes, Isn't who Chad can, O younger than him. By a couple of years, I think, but not by much. Like, I don't know, who do you think is going to make twist into older age? Chad's pretty. I mean, okay. So here's the thing, dude. Richard's is, Richard's pretty fucking healthy. Yeah, he's he's. So is Chad though. He like, eats Chad's around. Chad's on the sludge. Yeah, he makes you know like sludge. he fucking Chad's on like a new like era. Dude, are we going to see like an eighty year old man do make twists? I hope so. That'll it's it's going to be awesome. it's going to be Chad and Todd Richards. Are we talking out in the powder like Misty Flip style? Or no, we, of course. Okay, pipe. so this is what we're going to On gonna the quarter pipe. Listen. That's it, gnarly, dude. It's going to be Chad Otterstrom and Todd Richards and they're going to make twist and just like touch dicks in the air. <laughs> when they're when they're 80 years old. It's going to be sick. <laughs> Dude, uh, you don't want to take a fall on a QP at 80. They'll man. both be wearing condoms. Talk so. about breaking a hip <laughs> and mass. And okay. masks. Okay, yeah. well, thank you guys so much for listening. We will see you next week over and out from the bomb hole. Goodbye.